Now at 5 a.m. on WKYT this morning, a man is in critical condition this morning after a deadly crash in Jessamine County. We'll have details on the investigation into that crash coming up. A live report. The Federal Aviation Administration is expected to release some new regulations for drone owners months after a drone crash at Commonwealth Stadium. It almost interrupted the first football game. And authorities in Clark County have issued a golden alert for a man who's been missing since yesterday afternoon. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning from WKYT and welcome in. Hope you had a nice weekend. Ready to go in this new week. It's going to be a chilly one. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca. So perhaps you did the weekend, you know, restocking a little bit, maybe doing some shopping. I know I did to try to get some sweaters into that closet. Uh, it's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Saturday was really uh, cold around here. Let's check in. Meteorologist Micah Harris he is tracking everything for us. Good morning. Hey, good morning. And what we're seeing outside this morning is another start with the 30s. Even some locations down just below freezing this morning. There's Live Sky Camera with Clear Skies. 32 there in Somerset, Danville. Work your way off into Crab Orchard. Uh, that's another area that's really cold this morning. London Corbin area sitting at 31 degrees. That's our cold spot this morning. And by the afternoon, 63. It's getting better. You got to remember this weekend was, was in the 50s. We'll be in the 60s today and tomorrow, but then the 70s off toward mid and late week. So that big upswing of temperatures, that's our focus. Beautiful weather ahead. I'll get right into that in just about 10 minutes. All right, thank you. Let's get right to the news. This morning, authorities in Jessamine County are investigating a crash that killed a woman. It hurt five others. Nicholasville police say just after 6.30 last night, two cars crashed outside the BP gas station there on US 27 near Catnip Hill. Four of those hurt are expected to be okay. The fifth is in critical condition. WKYT's Mark Barber is at UK Hospital this morning with more details. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Bill. And that sixth person who was in the, involved in this crash died. We're told she was a 53 year old Nicholasville woman. Now she was a passenger in an SUV that was involved in that fatal crash. We're told that the driver of that SUV is still in the hospital this morning, as you just mentioned, in critical condition. Now that fatal crash happened about 630 last night at Nicholasville Road in Catnip Hill Road. The coroner is identifying the woman who died as Carol Sue Huff. We're told she was killed when the SUV that she was in tried to turn into a gas station. Investigators tell us that it hit a Volvo that was driving south on US 27. Police say four people in that car were all taken to the hospital, but fortunately they were not seriously hurt. The crash shut down both southbound lanes of Nicholasville Road for about four hours while police tried to figure out what happened. This morning, a GoFundMe page has been set up in Huff's name to help the family with funeral costs. The donations are starting to pour in as people say they are really going to miss this 53 year old. One donor who was involved on this web page described Huff as a woman who made everybody their very best. That's the latest here from UK Hospital. I'm Mark Barber, WKYT. Hey Mark, thank you. The Federal Aviation Administration is getting ready to require drone pilots to register their aircraft with the government. Now, this comes two months after a student allegedly crashed a drone into Commonwealth Stadium right before a UK football game. WKYT's Hillary Thornton is live for us this morning at Commonwealth. Good morning, Hillary. Good morning. Back in September, there was an incident with a drone, as you mentioned, here at Commonwealth Stadium when just minutes before UK season opener. Inside of a stadium full of fans, a drone was seen hovering before crashing onto an outside deck on the suite level. Now, this is just one of many examples of why people have big concerns with these devices. And today, the Department of Transportation is expected to announce a new drone registration requirement to try and help ease those growing concerns. We are told the Federal Aviation Administration will require owners of drones to register the remote control aircraft with the government. They say they want all drones to register with them so they can be tracked back to their owners if the drone is involved in an accident. One of the biggest dangers that transportation leaders worry about is a crash between a drone and a passenger plane. So far this year, pilots have reported around 650 drone sightings. Now, officials say the goal is to have the registry requirement in place before the holidays when they expect many to receive drones as gifts. And as for that drone crash here at Commonwealth, the owner, UK law student Peyton Wilson, was cited and charged with second degree wanton endangerment. He is scheduled to be in court for that charge tomorrow. Live in Lexington, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. All right, thanks so much, Hillary. 
New this morning, authorities in Clark County have issued a golden alert for a man who's been missing since yesterday afternoon. Deputies say 89-year-old Leon McKinney went missing around 1.30 Sunday. He told his family he was going to Preston in Bath County but never came home. They say they last saw him wearing a gray shirt and blue jeans. We're told he has trouble walking and has a bad back. Deputies say he drives a 2007 light gray Buick. The search continues this morning for a Kentucky man who's been missing for weeks in Washington state. The sheriff's deputies there say the 39-year-old Austin Oldfield from Louisville was last heard from on September 17th. They say he told his girlfriend he was going out to spend two weeks camping. He's now been gone for more than a month. Earlier this week, deputies found a car with Kentucky plates associated with Oldfield. Deputies said that this weekend they're still searching. Coming up on 506 now on WKYT this morning, and two hikers who disappeared in Jessamine County were found safe. Crews battled chilly temperatures early Sunday morning while searching for the two. The Lexington Police Department even flew its helicopter over the scene to help locate them. The chopper has a thermal camera to help detect body heat. After many hours, rescuers finally found them. The hikers had heard the boat motor coming up and were able to call out for help. They had hunkered down underneath the canoe to, to seek shelter is why the helicopter did not see them. Rescuers said the missing hikers did not have a cell phone with them. This morning, the Eastern Kentucky Board of Regents will meet to discuss the issue of security on campus. Last week, university police found a threatening message written on a bathroom wall on campus. Police have not arrested anyone, but the threat forced EKU to cancel classes last week. During the board meeting today, EKU President Michael Benson will provide a general update on security issues on campus. Firefighters in Corbin are still investigating a house explosion over the weekend that severely injured the man who lived there. The house on 11th Street blew up Saturday night. Firefighters say the homeowner was severely burned. The blast knocked the home off of its foundation. What remains of the home, they say, will have to be demolished. Neighbors say the blast was so big that they could feel the ground shake. I just heard the explosion and I walked around and looked and uh, there was some smoke coming from the ceiling and I noticed the blocks had been blown 10 yards probably. Firefighters say the gas company checked outside lines. They did not find any leaks. There have been, they've not been able to get inside the home as of yet to check for possible leaks there. Shareholders for one of Kentucky's biggest employers are set to vote on their company's proposed merger today. Back in July, Aetna announced it was buying Louisville-based Humana for $37 million. Today, shareholders for both companies will be voting on whether or not they will merge. According to the Louisville Courier-Journal, both companies' boards of directors have already voted in favor of the deal. Federal regulators are expected to make a final decision within the coming months. Both Humana and Aetna are expected to close on the sale by the end of the year. People who live near the National Corvette Museum in Bowling Green have filed a lawsuit against it. The Warren County Planning Commission and Neighbors Against the Motorsports Park say that the factory, museum, and motorsports park is too loud. The plaintiffs want to shut down the track and have the company compensate them. The Corvette Museum says it's doing everything it can to curb the noise levels. We have been working hard to try to come into compliance with that. That included building the berm that's now complete. That included uh, planting some trees that's now complete. That in com included putting up some noise abatement at the western edge of the property, which is now complete. Neighbors Against the Motorsports Park, that organization did not want to comment. In McCrary County, the Whitley City Fire Department is dedicating a new training center and a memorial to a fallen firefighter. Lieutenant Arlie Poo Hill was fatally injured while trying to rescue someone from a burning home in August of 2013. During Hill's hospital stay, firefighters from Cincinnati and Lexington, and from all across the country for that matter, helped the department. And veterans in Frankfurt got the chance this weekend to pay tribute to veterans. Kentucky Secretary of State Allison Lundergan Grimes, Commissioner Heather French Henry, and country music artist Lee Greenwood dedicated a giant American flag and a Christian flag to a site right off of I 64 on Sunday. Following the ceremony, Greenwood performed a free concert for veterans and their families.
I love a chance there. to see Lee Greenwood. His voice just gives me chills. Oh, it does. Yeah, he's <laughs> great. Especially the, the very patriotic song that he's known for. All right, uh, WKYT this morning on your Monday, just getting started, and it's good to have you along. When we come back, it's now possible to travel to a galaxy far, far away while staying right here on Earth. We'll show you this first of its kind airline after this. Very clear this morning, very calm. As we go throughout your work week, we're going to be seeing temperatures on the upswing. I'll show you how warm we get coming up.